In this most recent election, all of us Americans watched the present president of the United States in a church listening to somebody, somebody saying something bad about white people and Jews. Okay? That has caused an enormous amount of confusion. I don't think it's the pastors. I don't think it's the imams who do a great job. It's leadership. That's what I think the problem is. And when you have, for the first time, a president of Israel who gets shown in the back door of the White House by somebody, that causes confusion, not just amongst Jewish people, but amongst Americans. When they watch on television the president of the United States sit for 15 years with a preacher who is racist, I don't know what he had to say about Islam because they didn't, they didn't tape all of his things. That's an enormous amount of the problem that I see as what's going on right now that's alarming to you. I don't think it's the preachers. I don't think it's the imams. I don't even think it's even that much. Obviously, 9-11 was a terrible thing. But when there's no leadership, and when you see Christians, there's a real, very interesting article that I shared that you all should read in the newest commentary magazine. This administration, this president, has said nothing about the slaughter of Christians all over the world. And I think that that is also part of the problem here. It's leadership. Because when you sit down and the American people would watch this guy talking, and he's sitting in the audience, it's very confusing. And it really upsets a lot of people. And then also seeing him bow down to the, 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 uh, the king of Saudi Arabia. No American president has ever had to do that, or would ever do that. And I'm not trying to be political here, but I'm just saying, when the media... No, 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 just listen, I'm just trying to talk about why there's confusion. I'm not saying that this didn't happen in Franklin Roosevelt's time when he went to church and the minister got up and said that the Jews killed Christ. Okay? So if the media... this is a question, so, you know, like, yeah. how much of the leadership impacts on, uh, you know, anti-Semitism or hate crimes? Would you like to just... Uh, Talk about it, it takes two to dance, and uh, it obviously people choose what leadership they want to listen to and what leadership they don't want to listen to. And we live in a Jerry Springer world uh, where the basest instincts. I mean, I think uh, right now in the United States, every little child gets vaccinated against childhood diseases and shame. You know, we have no sense of shame anymore. We can say the most outlandish things. We can say lie. You ever notice that no, that there, there's untruth, there's inaccuracy. But we never say, well, excuse me, that was a lie. <laughs> uh, and so that leadership, you can't have leadership in a vacuum. What is a leader who has absolutely no followers? Not a leader at all. And so that, uh, you know, it, there's no totally guilty and no totally innocent in all of this. And uh, personally, I find the whole civil discourse in the United States uh, to be an oxymoron because it is no longer civil. We call each other names. Uh, we call each other, you know, you know, right now a bad word is moderate. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, that scares me. That scares me. Uh, as moderate as opposed to what? If a Muslim is moderate, that's good. He's not a, he or she is not an extremist. But if somebody else is a moderate, that's not good. Oh, uh, you know, uh, I think we really need... Um, uh, a notion of the common good, I don't think we have that at all anymore, where I'm willing to give up something so that other people can have a better life. And, you know, I don't find very many people talking about that, but I also feel very strongly uh, about the, the restoration of civility in our society. Can I just tell what, what does that have to do? My point was not political, it's just... People saw that, okay? The, the guy who was running for president of the United States 
sat there and was a minister, and he went to that minister for 15 years and said those things. I think, by the way, I think it was 20 years. Sorry. Uh, yeah. I want to give all of the liberals a benefit of the doubt. I what you're saying, and I agree. The trouble I find in this country is we're very selective in our anger. We're very selective. For example, you can have Pat Buchanan say horrendous things, and finally, he's removed from MSNBC. He's no longer on Morning Joe. He's taken off the air. Al Sharpton, who has said and done horrible things, hosts the program on NM. Now, why is it wrong in one case and right in the other? So I, I think if we're going to talk about some kind of standard, that when you sit there and say nothing in the face of hatred, you are, you're guilty in the eyes of religious law. Because there's no such thing in religious law, at least in the Jewish point of view, I'm sure in the other traditions, as an innocent bystander. You can't just say, I was there, but I couldn't do anything about it. Yes, you could. Silence in religion is not golden. Silence is a golden calf. Because Aaron was, was castigated for doing nothing and allowing the people to build a golden calf. So I think you're right. Leadership has to be moral. I mentioned before about education. Education has to be predicated on morality. It's not just about learning. Uh, Germany was the most cultured, learned, you know, not just trained, they were learned. Philosophers, scientists, they were learned. But there was no morals in the curriculum. And if you don't have morals, if you don't have standards in that curriculum, then you have a very kind of selective, uh, truncated educational system. And uh, just uh, to... Uh how can I say, the second, your idea, uh, and that you reminded me of the saying, sayings of the prophet, and he says, if uh, someone is silenced against uh, uh, anything bad that is going on, not necessarily related uh, to Islam and believers, uh, according to Islam, of course, uh, who is uh, a Satan without tongue. Yeah. And he also says, uh, whoever sees a bad thing, it's the, the right word is munkar, that means uh, the thing that is not likable by people uh, and uh, Muslims. And Zaman, I mean, this is a religious obligation for Muslims. If you see any hate crime, I mean, you have to do something. It says, uh, if you see anything bad, uh, you have to try to correct it with your hand. And if you cannot do it with your hand, sometimes it, it creates anarchy because it's uh, someone else's job or government's job. Then, then, then they try to do it with your tongue. Uh, try to say something, or uh, do through media, or I mean, you can interpret uh, this tongue thing with a lot of things. And if you cannot do that, uh, just do not accept it in your heart. And this is the lowest level of faith. If you cannot do that, if you accept it in your heart, you are not a faithful person. You are not a Muslim. You have to at least reject it from your, out of your heart. So that is a mission, as a matter of fact, that is given, and I totally agree. And uh, just staying uh, uh, or saying nothing or doing nothing against all kind of crimes is a crime by itself, because uh, the holy books tells us nations that are destroyed by God, uh, because uh, there were some innocent incidents. I mean, the, the whole nation was wiped out, and angels ask why? Because there are some innocent people. Yes, they were innocent, but they didn't do anything to prevent uh, the evil that is ri rising. And I always give this example. Uh, if someone is driving a car and makes involves in an accident, it says, I mean, it's not my fault. I mean, I, I mean I, I, it did, yes, you should have done something. You should have pushed the brake. Doing nothing is sometimes causing accident. You should have done something. You should have gone with the road. And uh, I think that also uh, I just want to... Sure. All right, I'd like to take some other questions. Uh, yes, uh, Abdullah. Yes, please. Could, um, if you could it, just stand up so sure, we can yeah. see you. Could uh, Islamophobia, particularly in the European context today, be interpreted as a form of displaced anti-Semitism? I mean, Europe essentially killed off all its Jews with the Holocaust. So what we're seeing today, is that really drawn from that same wall spring. Yeah. You know, that theory has been, has been expressed that uh, it's a cover. Uh, you know, Anti-Israel, for example, sentiment is, a, is predicated on anti-Semitism. I think one of the things maybe I should have addressed earlier is there is room for criticism. I'm not here to tell you that everything Israel does is right. 
that you know everything the other side does is wrong. Obviously, there are rights and wrongs on both sides. But when you hold one country to a standard that you hold no other country to a standard, when you, when you judge one people differently than you judge everyone else, to me, there's something wrong uh, with that kind of approach. Uh, and I think in many cases, uh, you're right, that the kind of the, the, the hateful discourse or denunciation of Israel today, you know, is intertwined with anti-Semitism. I know when I say that, there's some people who say, you see, you can't criticize Israel. The minute you criticize Israel, you're accused of being an anti-Semite. And I'm very sensitive to that, because all you have to do is pick up an Israeli paper, and you will see <laughs> debates, discussions, animated, not just, you know, a matter of fact, animated, very heated. But there isn't this attempt to diminish the worth of the other. And that's what I find so disgraceful and so uh, discomforting. Uh, so I, I think what you're saying has uh, a good deal of merit to it. Thank you. Question? Yes. Yeah, it's, uh, is there a question, Mike? Oh. Um, <clears throat> it seems to me that maybe uh, sort of crossing over all of this is basically something that I've never been able to understand, and, and perhaps it's something we really can't do anything about. But to whatever extent possible, it seems like we ought to draw just the general basic <laughs> intelligence of each individual. Not everybody's going to be able to pull it, pull it together, but if we listen carefully to the facts and don't take political messages regardless which which way, which presidential candidate or president or whatever, and don't just because a president listens to something, it doesn't mean that he's in favor and so forth. So we, we weigh all the evidence ourselves and don't don't just believe something because some minister, imam, priest, whatever says it or whatever. Collect as much thorough information and make our own decision based on the overall uh, sum of the information. If everybody is trained to think intelligently as an individual, that would be so helpful. Unfortunately, that much of the world um, is swayed by one thing or another, what one, uh, what a madrasa or a group of madrasas say, or what some, some Catholic or Protestant sect or, any, or even others. And, we need to somehow draw out the individual intelligence that's there to make decisions, remembering that anything and everything can and is said. All we need to do is look at the political uh, process that's going on right now. Political candidates will and do say literally anything, <laughs> lie through their teeth, every one of them, Republican, Democrat, whatever. And you don't just listen to them because they're Republican or Democrat or liberal or, or conservative. You, you weigh the specific evidence and you fact check. And that's what we need to do, fact check on our religious evaluations as well. And, and withhold judgment when it comes to judging against, uh, against Muslims and Jews and, uh, and uh, Catholics and Protestants alike. And they've all had their histories and so forth, but you need to weigh the evidence. That's unfortunate. What a lot of people are going to do? They, they're, they're quickly influenced by the first thing that comes along, very willy nilly, just because somebody says something, they believe it. Yeah, I think you know, like over there, the, the, the message was you know, like leadership is so important, and uh, and I think it's it starts uh, you know like I'm a, I'm I'm a New Yorker and I love to ride on the subways, and there is just something that I like to hear every time that I get on subways. It's uh, it says courtesy is contagious and it starts with me, with you. Uh, and I said, courtesy is contagious and starts with you, with you. So I think like as the community members, the faith communities, as we educate our communities, and, you know, like our young generations, then I think that will create an impact on our leaders as well because the generations that we have will be the next generations. And uh, personally, I'm a person who is very involved with the, you know, uh, assembly members, senators. I go to Albany all the time and they are really, really into bringing communities together and they really work hard and I know from Brooklyn so many senators and not only the you know like the elected officials but I know the FBI is working so hard with the community engagement councils and the NYPD you know, like most of the you know like elected officials and the uh, political and you know like uh, leaders they are I think they're struggling they're trying their best but of course you know there are you no know, obstacles on the way uh, maybe I can get maybe one two questions at one time, then I will have to, you know, yes. Uh,